I'm Austin. I work as an engineer. Followed in my father's footsteps. I never thought of myself as a super specialist, genius, or scientist. I just always love my work. Because it's pure creativity. Many people may think that there is nothing beautiful in rough metal, frame, and so on. But it is from iron that we can get the most beautiful grills for windows, make huge rough chains, and this will become an irreplaceable detail in the overall design picture. In general, I'm a romantic. I don't have a girlfriend right now, but I did. And once I fell in love so much that I finally understood the phrase, from love, wings grow. My girlfriend's name was Jill. We met at a scientific conference, where she presented her work. She had a very noble project. She invented steel wings, wanted to teach people to fly. Jill did a great job, but the judges criticized her because she didn't finish something and it broke her spirit. And it broke her spirit. She was a vulnerable girl, but she was also very smart. She ran out the door and I ran after her. I wanted to calm her down. I could see that she was very upset and crying. When I ran out, I saw her sitting on the ground, all in tears, sad and broken. I immediately handed her a napkin. She looked up and I saw a beautiful face smeared with makeup. Jill thanked me for this help. I considered this project the best among all my own. Do people really care about flights? She asked. I comforted her by telling her that the judges were all idiots. She asked me what my project was, and I didn't tell her. I just said it wasn't interesting. To be honest, when I saw Jill, I knew my life wasn't going to be the same. It's really hard to get it into my soul. And from the first minute, I could see how depressed she was. So I decided to stay with her. We probably talked for hours after the contest. We discussed new ideas that we came up with on the go. And it was insanely interesting and fun. Jill was incredible. So we started dating. We didn't need much to be happy. To be close to each other or to talk on the phone, discuss the scientific discoveries of the day, exchange opinions about the projects we started. But there was something else that we were no less fond of. It's the food. Oh yes, we ate all the time. We ate everything in a row and often harmful food, knowing what it would lead to. Jill and I had a burger and fries competition. Oh, this girl impressed me with her will to win. She just opened her mouth wide and bit the bun so that I could see all her tonsils. And every time she beat me, I bought her an ice cream cone on top. I knew that my feelings for her were growing every day. I couldn't stop and just spread my arms out like wings and flew. Yes, I was flying from love, and it was beautiful. And you know, it is more painful to fall to those who will take off above all. In my case, I touched the heavens. Jill died of stomach cancer. I didn't even know. You know how it is. A person lives a full life, knows how to laugh at himself, knows how to forgive, love, sincerely enjoy the little things. We think that he is abnormal or something, but it turns out that the person is living the last moments and therefore feels more than others. Jill didn't want to focus on the treatment. She wanted us to be a normal, happy couple. I have never met such cheerful girls. She knew perfectly well that she was dying and did not waste time on treatment. She preferred a short but bright life. Her death came as a shock, not only to me, but to all of her friends. I grieved for a long time, and could not come to my senses. I had a feeling that I had lost all interest in science and life. I don't remember how long I couldn't look in the direction of her friends. Everything reminded me of her. Every night I thought about how we flew together. It was beautiful. Nothing is more inspiring than mutual feelings. Six months later, I'll sew it on her grave. I told her at length about my condition. I never dared to talk to anyone else. I kept the pain to myself. Suddenly, I had an idea. I wanted to finish the project and finish the wings. Yes, I suddenly felt such an urge of strength and energy. I'll finish the project for you, honey, I said out loud and ran to her house. Running to her house, I literally burst into her room and took all the drawings and sketches. I began to carefully analyze the diagrams and make edits. At first, I thought it would be rough work, since the material is heavy and unlikely to take off. But then I realized that this was the whole point of the design. In its strength, I threw all my energy and time into Jill's project, sitting in the workshop day and night, 
honing each feather individually. I was aiming to take this paper to the science competition that was going to take place a year later. I was very worried. Jill's family found out about my idea, and they came there to support me. Finally, when the presentation ended, the judges asked what these wings would be for. To learn to fly, I said. The judges tossed their heads and didn't understand. And I said that if they never loved, they wouldn't understand. They, of course, said that science and love are incompatible things. I got into an argument with them, and I was excluded from the competition for behavior. If I were still the same Austin as before, I would never cross the jury in my life and come up with some useful project. For example, in the field of ecology. But now, it seems to me that our science lacks something magical and fabulous. We are creative people, so why don't we use our potential to the end? Jill's sister hugged me and thanked me for trying to continue her sister's work. Well, I still took the wings home and began to experiment. I tried to fly, but each time failed. I even built a special zone at home for running and landing. I couldn't wait to show it to Jill. I knew she could see. Every day when I tried to take off, something didn't work out for me. Then I would pick up my tools again and go to the workshop. I had to finish what I started for her. Finally, when almost a year had passed, near the anniversary of my girlfriend's death, I gathered my wings, strapped them on my back, went out into a suitable open area, caught a fair wind, and took a chance. I closed my eyes in fear, and then I saw something floating above the ground. Oh yes, yes, I did it! I did it! You hear, Jill? I did it! I shouted like a madman. Of course, this did not last long, and I had to constantly accelerate, but the goal was achieved. I learned what flying is, so I was able to grow my own wings. I wish she'd had time. Now, after reading this story, you will probably think that I am a mutant, or that this does not happen at all. But unfortunately, it is so. My name is Call. I am 20 years old now, and I will probably be 20 years old for many years to come. No, no, I'm not immortal, but I will definitely live longer than an ordinary person. I don't have a heart. Or rather, it's not alive. It's mechanical. I'm a bit of a robot. I was born an ordinary person. My father is a scientist, he is an engineer, and my mother is a housewife. They divorced when I was 14. My father spent almost all day at his job. He had a secret service in the Ministry of Defense. My mother did not approve of his absence and did not believe that he was working and not walking on the left, cheating on her. When her nerves gave out, she packed her things, wrote a note saying that she was going to her sister's because she couldn't live like this anymore, and left. I was at school at the moment, and when I came, I saw such a gift. It went straight on my birthday. I must have forgotten about it. I was almost mad about it. I could not believe in such a betrayal on her part. I remember sitting in the kitchen and crying because my mother didn't have a sister. I called my dad and he arrived early. At first, I thought it was a joke too. He was confused and scared. How to live now? How can he cope with a child? All this terrified the both of us. The first thing my father did was call my mother but she didn't answer. So he said that he would go to the police and report her missing. At that moment, I was already afraid of dad, or rather his actions. I could see that he was emotional. He was so freaked out that he smashed the glass in the kitchen with his fist. After wrapping his bloody hand, my father grabbed his car keys and barked at me to fasten my seatbelt. It was raining and it was late. Well, then the classic. My father lost control. We got into an accident and crashed into a truck. If I hadn't been strapped in, I would have probably died from a broken spine, but the situation was no less severe. Shards of broken glass pierced my chest and hit my heart. The ambulance arrived. I had a very difficult operation, but the doctors thought that my heart was almost useless. They gave me a couple of months, and I couldn't have lasted much longer. My father blamed and cursed himself for what had happened, saying that he had not kept his wife and ruined his son. Well, then he pulled himself together, and after being discharged from the hospital, he took me to some place. I was very weak and could hardly walk, and he kept dragging me around on a stretcher or in a wheelchair. I remember how I found myself in some basement room. It was cool and a little damp. This is my lab, son. Your mother left me because of her. 
In her opinion, I had mistresses. So this is what she is, he said, joking. I barely looked around and saw that there was an unrealistic amount of all sorts of equipment. Did I tell you that my father worked for the Department of Defense? So at that time, my father was the head of a group engaged in developing a new level of project. The state planned to create an invincible army of half-cyborgs, half-humans. All this was in pilot mode, and of course, top secret. My father told me that now, that his son, I, was in the grave with one foot. He decided to go against the laws of nature and revive me with the help of science. I can't lose you too, he said. There were several other people around, and I was being readied for surgery again. Dad put a mask on my face and I fell asleep. In my dream, I saw my mother. She was crying for some reason and was unhappy. She was on her knees at someone's grave, begging for forgiveness. As I approached, I saw my name on the tombstone. Oh no! I opened my eyes in fright, but I could not speak or scream. The first thing I saw was my father sleeping by the bed. I didn't know what was going on. It was terribly painful to breathe. I tried to remove the oxygen mask from my face, and my father woke up. He approached me, his eyes and face telling me that it was a long time since he had slept or eaten properly. My father calmed me down and told me not to worry about anything. In short, his project was a success, and I was the first person to test it all. And I survived. As I was told later, my heart was replaced with a special artificial prosthesis. This operation is now performed in the world, but mine was slightly different from the others. Since it was a military laboratory, the goals and ideas of the project were aimed at improving the soldiers. My father hid some details, but after the operation, I began to recover faster. My body grew stronger, and I became stronger. Another feature is that I can now live longer than ordinary people, and still not change my appearance. I became a completely different person, not the same as before. Every day when I looked at myself in the mirror, I wondered what would have happened if my mother hadn't run away then. Perhaps I would have had a happier childhood, where there are no endless checks, injections, IVs, ultrasounds, tests, and stitches all over my body. I hated her, and my heart was filled with anger. After all that, my father and I learned to live together. I came to terms with the idea that medical procedures and examinations are part of life, and its image. Only in the movies can a person continue to travel, drink, smoke, and dance until morning after a complex operation. In my case, every extra stress could cause the body to go into shock. This meant that I had to lie down on the couch again for examination. My father quit his job and started a business so that he could be with me more often. He still felt guilty about what had happened. To keep me occupied, he offered me sports, which was a great charge, and I felt strong at that moment. When I turned 20, I became a professional wrestling coach. My new heart constantly demanded that I be on the move, and all these years were dedicated to active sports. I didn't care about anything else, and I have to admit that my father was really worried that I didn't have a girlfriend. He even began to think that I was not interested in them at all. Ha ha ha, but it's not. I just haven't met the right one yet. And to be honest, I wasn't sure anyone would want to be with me at all. Better to be alone, I told myself, and Rachel appeared. A heart doesn't have to be love, Call. I've always told you that. Hi, I'm almost Iron Man's girlfriend, she said laughing. The first time I met Call, it seemed to me that he was not a man, but a machine. Then I just signed up my brother in the wrestling section. What struck me was that Call didn't even have shortness of breath after the hour-long fight. It was more than strange, and I came dozens of times and he looked anywhere but not in my direction. That was until I almost hit him with a car one day. He ran into the road so suddenly that I barely had time to slow down. Call said that he was running and had accelerated so fast that it was difficult to stop. Of course, I didn't believe him at first. So, word by word, we met. Our first date was the stupidest in the world. Call didn't know how to talk to girls at all, but it was funny. And then I found out about his story. I was scared and surprised. A comic book story, I told him. And then he showed me the full-length scar, and when I pressed my ear to his chest, I didn't hear the knocking. That's when I went into shock. Call thought I'd leave him after this. They say that meeting a man like him, and even with such scars, is not so pleasant. But no, I had already fallen in love with him, with a man without a heart. 
and as you understand, you can love without it, be kind and gentle without it. If everyone were like Call's father, hundreds of thousands of lives could be saved. That's why Call and I decided to go to college and train as surgeons. I can confidently say that I was lucky to meet such a person. You don't have to be self-conscious just because you are different from others. On the contrary, we should be happy that life continues. So don't be afraid to love.